Hi everyone. I am going to show you the contents of my summer stitch journal. I didn't really intend for these to be seasonal, but that's just kind of how they worked out. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but each one of these is made from uh, the cover of a bullet journal that I've used up and then torn out all the pages and then added uh, new fabric pages and a cover and then I fill up the pages. I probably made this one a little bit too thick, but that's okay. Um, it's just got a little bit of an alligator mouth, or it would if I wasn't binding it together with this ribbon. Anyway, um, let's look inside. Again, like my last video, I've not looked at most of these in quite a while, so um, they might be kind of a surprise to me as well as to you. Um, I will say that the neighbors are having some roof work done, so it might be a little bit noisy occasionally, like that beeping that you hear right now. Um, we'll just make the best of it, okay? All right. Um, this was just playing some lace fabric and some blanket stitch and some other things. Um, a little bit of couching, a little bit of close circular work. Um, I really started playing with blanket stitch a lot um, towards the middle of this year, trying different things, finally learning how to connect the rows in different ways. So um, this is one with a piece of fabric that just has these lovely speckled eggs on it. Um, I tried to put some French knots in the middle. Uh, they're not very visible, but I like them. I believe this was one of the Kathryn stitch prompts, probably the Sachiko, um, the Sachiko lesson. This is something I do a lot in mending, um, and this was just a fun one to do with some rainbow pieces that I had. Um, a little more blanket stitching this time. I also have this fabric that has some pomegranates in it, and uh, pomegranates are one of my favorite fruits and um, artistic motifs, so I was glad to have that on, uh, I think it's a quilter's cotton. Um, this I think was the Victorian crazy quilting prompt with K3N, um, again the eggs. I think these are Mary Mecco uh, prints, again the pomegranates and some other stuff, and I just kind of went uh, wild with the different stitches that I wanted to do. That was fun. Here is, I think I imagine this as like the river into the underworld. Many of you probably know that um, pomegranates are associated with Persephone who was kidnapped or went willingly to the underworld uh, in Greek mythology and her, um, she had to stay after eating some pomegranate seeds so and then the the mythology says that you have to cross the certain river to get to Hades uh, the Greek underworld and I guess I was imagining that this might be the river um, this one was special I did another video um, just on this one this was the piece that I <clears throat> excuse me that I stitched in um, the spring and then buried and dug up again on the summer solstice. Um, it has some rust stains and some stains from blackberries and other things that were in the ground um, or rather wrapped up with it and then put in the ground. So um, I'd like to do that again but I haven't done it yet. Thinking maybe of saving it for the rainy season. I imagine that uh, having all that rain and water might affect the fabric in some interesting ways. Um, more blanket stitch. And it's hard to see, but there's an elastic cord, gold elastic cord, in this part of it that I fastened in with blanket stitch. I think, going back, I, I probably would have couched this and then gone from there. But, um, I don't know, I just find these kind of spiral works very meditative. Um, this was uh, like a hex piece, a hexy, 
what am I trying to say, hexagram piece, um, but also a little bit of the Dot A Day project with um, Jerry Bellini. So, um, yeah, I like how that one turned out. And then we started getting into stitching with leaves. Um, and I've done several of those, and I still have more leaves on tap to uh, stitch in the coming weeks and months. Um, these are two eucalyptus leaves that I found. We have a lot of these in California. Um, and even though they were relatively dry when I started working with them, they still smelled really great, really fresh and eucalyptus-y when I was stitching through them, so that was nice. Um, this was a log cabin that I did. This is one of um, Jude Hill from Spirit Cloths um, Indigo Dyed Circles. Um, she sell this, sells those on her shop page. Um, so then I just built a log cabin around it and did a lot of embroidery. Um, I think I might have done this one while I was on vacation, but I can't remember now. Um, here's another dot a day. Um, I didn't actually do a dot a day. I did dots here and there. <clears throat> this fabric is from um, a, a duster or robe that I made recently that's uh, printed linen with, with floral motifs. Um, here's another leaf. I don't remember what this leaf is from, but I love the the gradation and coloring from the green to the orange to the brown. Um, and this I put some fabric behind it and did some eyelet stitching. Um, I think this must have been another dot a day. This was not my favorite one, but the crocheted piece was also from uh, Jude Hill of Spirit Cloth. And then this one... I'm, I'm becoming quite fond of log cabins, but I have a lot of these little floral uh, quilting cottons that I wanted to turn into something like this. Like, this is extremely twee and adorable, but I really like how it came out. Um, this, I think, was the Mon um, mandala prompt with K3N. Um, I didn't want to do a straight um, mandala, but I adopted a design from... Uh, the barn stars of Pennsylvania Dutch communities, and I found one that was sort of overlapping petals. So um, I really like how this one came out, actually. And this, I suppose, is another dot a day. Again, another um, spirit cloth dot with some other stuff around it. Um, been into a lot of blues and greens lately, so that'll come up again and again, I think. Um, this one is more greens and neutrals, and again, blanket stitch, getting the hang of connecting all the pieces together. Uh, this time with the wagon wheel piece in the middle. This definitely was while I was on vacation. Uh, we stayed on the Mendocino coast, and we saw some really incredible sunsets. So um, I did this piece inspired by the sunsets. Um, this is another of the indigo dyed spirit cloth pieces. Um, I turned half of it is behind this panel, um, so it's sinking into the water. But yeah, I'm happy with that, how that one came out. This one was a try at fabric manipulation. Um, it's some fairly translucent organza on uh, red cotton with just a variety of stitches. I want to do more of this. Um, I feel like I didn't quite understand what I was doing, but it was fun to try. Um, what was this one? Oh, this is the faux cathedral window prompt. I think it was a wonky Wednesday with K3N. Um, this one was fun to do, and it, these edges are on the bias, so they curve really nicely. Um, makes a nice little, um, peek into, or portal into another place somehow. Um, that'd be fun to play with some more. Um, speaking of portals, this was inspired by um, traditional Indian embroidery, another K3N prompt. Um, I didn't have any of the pieces of mirrored um, or silvery um, stuff, so I put a nickel in instead. It's not staying in quite as well as it could be, but it's alright. 
Uh, this was a wonky checkerboard. I feel like <laughs> this one is very wonky. Not only was it not straight to begin with, but I stitched it to the backing cloth quite uh, crookedly. And then there's this sort of crazy spiral in the middle of it. Um, somebody in the k 3 n Facebook group said that it reminded them of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. And I, I think I have to agree with that. But um, yeah, mad tea party. This was um, more leaf stitching, another eucalyptus one. And this, I believe, was an ivy piece that um, I didn't dry quite flat, but is working out to be quite flat in the booklet. Oh, we're almost at the end. This was the uh, Judy Martin inspired piece, um, a sort of long length of couched. Um, I'll see if I can get the whole thing in here. No, probably not, but a long length of couched um, work. Hers was like hundreds of feet long, so we just did a short one. Um, these were ribbons from bullet journals, some kitchen twine, and then also I just stitched over the top of the leaves that are on this fabric that I use for the intermediate layer. <clears throat> then I think there's one more. Uh, yeah, this was a fabric collage plus some couching of jute twine. Um, I don't know. This one was a nice way to end the book. Again, very crooked, very wonky. Um, and I've found that I really like working on squares, so you've probably noticed that as I got toward the end of this book, it was more and more squares. Um, it just feels like a nice symmetrical format. Occasionally, you wind up with a an oblong piece, and then you have to figure out how to fill in the tops and the bottoms, and uh, the square makes it a little bit easier not to worry about that. So trying to look back. It's been squares for quite a while. Um, yeah. But something like this, like a rectangle works well because of the shape of the leaf and it fills the whole place. But um, yeah, sometimes you just gotta work out what to do with the tops and the bottoms. If you're working on something, let's say a circle, um, this worked out okay because I was able to make it into more of an oval shape, but you've still got a lot of blank space here at the top and bottom. And I don't know, I always feel at a loss for figuring out what to do with those spaces, so um, I'm leaning a lot more towards simple squares as much as I can. Um, so that's it for this one. I've already started on the next journal, and I hope that I will be able to share that with you when it's finished. Thanks again for being here, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Maybe it will inspire you. Um, I will put the links at least to um, K3 and Cloth Tales uh, channel in the, in the description below so that you can follow her work if you want to do that. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you so much.